Challenges for the WBA World Flyweight Championship tomorrow night live on BT Sport. A real, a real bonus attraction, really. A, a, a world title fight between a Ukrainian and a Costa Rican that has landed in the UK. What a, what a treat, Andy. What a treat. I'm all over this one. I, I like this fight. How you guys are doing? This is the uh, co-main event to uh, Berta Bia versus Yard. The uh, main event on top rank on ESPN Plus tomorrow. January the 28th, 2023. I believe I've seen this guy fight before. Let me pull up his uh, resume. David Jimenez, 12-0. and 0, Nine KOs, 30 years old. California away against Sandoval. Fighting at... Um... Oh, let me turn it up. He is... You, you, you know what I mean, Sam? It's just so, sometimes you see... You'll have seen backstage or during fight week opponents, not necessarily yours, but... You get a feel, don't you, for the way that they travel, how many people there are with them, whether they really. He's taking place at 112. Yeah, see, I'm not, uh, I'm not seen anybody to fight before, so I'm looking forward to this. You're saying they're good. It's for the WBA title. Between the Ring Magazine number six flyweight, that is Jimenez, and the Ring Magazine number. Let me see who the other guys are in the division. I'm getting back into the swing of things with boxing. I'm only really looking forward to the main event, to be honest. But I said, fuck it, it's the co-main event, you know. This is um, live going on right now as I'm recording this video. Fight number 22 for Arten, Julio Cesar Martinez, Sonny Edwards. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, you know, all over the place division as far as politically. It's pro bellum. Like, who is Sonny Edwards going to be with now? Who's the champion? Unbeaten in 21 fights. It looks quite big for a flyway though, doesn't it? Yeah, he's a big... By the way, Tommy Fury and uh, Jake Paul just got announced. There's, there's a bit of a density to him. What are you seeing, Andy? Well, you mentioned the... Uh, for Saudi Arabia. And that, as you get older, is always... Can be a problem when it comes to the weight, but particularly at these... At these it's going to be on February 26th in uh, Saudi Arabia. Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, ESPN, pay-per-view. He's been, he's been training in Kiev. His family are elsewhere. He's got four kids. Well, he's done it. He's done it. And he looks okay, doesn't he? He doesn't yeah. look, you know, he looks fine he to me. Sweet, yeah. Proudly got that Ukrainian flag. You guys care about this fight? And also, what does it lead to? That's the question. Like, I'm not a fan of, like, champions being champions, and then it don't, like, lead to nothing. Let's have a look at the face off. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two compete tomorrow night in a 12 round contest. It will be. Oh, he got those Sicario eyes. Ooh. Get it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm with him. Oh, he looked away first. He lost. He lost. That's it. He's finished. I changed my mind. They, they are not here to lose. Artem Delakayan has no intention of leaving this country. Oh, he just told him I'm gonna fuck title. you up. And I tell you, David Himmel I just translated has no it for intention you. of leaving this country without a world title. He was like, "Yo, come here, I'm gonna fuck you up." That's what he said. Let's take a jump cut. In fact, no, we don't have to take a jump cut. Um, let's do it this way. Artem to BF. Hey, let's go look at the card before they bring out the uh, main event fighters. Artem to BF. I think I think he can lose, yo. I think he can lose. He's just, you know, the layoffs. He is 38 years old. Um, we have seen him get, you know, dropped and touched up a little bit by fighters who are supposed to be of a lesser caliber. He did beat the shit out of uh, uh, Marcus Brown. That was brutal. Joe Smith. To win that WBO title from him. And now he's fighting Anthony Yard. But if you were to ask me, Anthony Yard is... Mm, is Anthony Yard... I think Anthony Yard is more fundamentally sound than Joe Smith. He's definitely better than Marcus Brown and Adam Denise. Volzdick, this was a good fight. I was there at that fight. I covered this. I met Bert BF, by the way. I had dinner with him and everything. Uh, if you notice during fight week, like he really is not a fan of media. Like Even when he says he go home, he don't watch boxing. Like he just train and just, you know, come in and do demolition jobs. But, you know, could age catch up? And I feel that Anthony Yard, even though he got knocked the fuck out by Kovalev, 
you know, I do feel that we seen something that he can box, that he can box, you know, but he also can gas late. He's got to pace himself. And frankly, you know, I'm not really a fan of his manager. Actually, I mean, not his manager, his trainer. Tony Day has calmed down a lot, though, didn't he? You know, he was a little cringe. But then again, I don't follow him on anything anymore. I just kind of felt it was a little smug for him to be on fucking social media promoting himself and then don't even uh, follow his own fighter. No bullshit. You know, I know it's kind of petty social media shit, but he really didn't. Like, how are you training somebody and all that? And I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. I don't know. But we're waiting for the fighters to hit the scale. I'm going to be here um, covering this fight. I haven't decided if I'm going to be streaming during the main event or not. I might. I might stream during the main event. But Bob Barum is saying basically, well, we don't know what Canelo's going to do. Canelo may come back in May to fight John, R John Ryder. And then I'm guessing he will go to Bevo after that. But Bob Barum is saying, he told Boxing Scene that, um, that uh, the fight could be moved to 2024, depending on what Canelo's going to do. But it's just like, okay, all right, you know, like we've been waiting for this fight for like years now. And I understand Anthony Yard, the mandatory, and it's kind of like an in-house fight between both Queensberry and Top Rank. They, they work heavily with each other. But, you know, we want to see the Bevo fight, you know, because then it's like, who's Bert to be of going to fight next? You know, I don't want to see him fight another mandatory, possibly Jean Pascal, who's fighting, what, March the 16th. He is the next mandatory. Can you believe that? Well, if he beats this dude, I don't know how to pronounce his name. This guy right here. You know, so Bevo. OK, so we can have Bevo versus Buwati. Canelo versus Ryder. And I guess Berta Biev, you know, will probably fight Colum Smith next. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. That's looking like this probably would be the move, right? I mean, who else would it be unless, you know, like politics get in the way and he's allowed a voluntary. But is, is Colum Smith now the mandatory? That's what we don't know. What's taking these guys so long? By the way, um, Anthony Yard is a huge fighter, like to be making 175 pounds. Like, I think he can do it if he can try. I think he can win on the cards. So let's turn it up. Are they back? Let's see. By the way, take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. It's going to be for the WBC, IBF, and WBO. Um, does he have the ring magazine? I believe Bevo does. I mean, Bertrand BF does have the ring. It's going to be some win for him, mate. Oh, here I we are. He does it, honestly, though. It's a big one. It's a big win for British boxing. Yeah, that's so, right. Big, massive, isn't it? You think of the fights, even if you look at the light heavyweights we've got over here, mate. I'm going to let it play through. Here is Anthony Yard, a tremendous ovation here in Wembley for Anthony Yard. The second time he is challenging for a world It looks title. good, not all sucked in. Half years removed from that first challenge. He has grown the biggest fight of his life, second title shot. As a fighter, and he believes his experience now, that he learned from that Kovalev fight, that he learned from those Lyndon Arthur fights, will be key in what happens on Saturday night. He's always in tremendous shape, and yeah, already, yeah. always. Yeah, he, he looks absolutely terrific. Like he always does. Let's go full screen. In the face, but that's that's no problem. You would expect that. He's a big old geezer, mate. <laughs> Isn't he? Isn't he? Well put, Sam. <laughs> He's a big old geezer. He's gonna be even bigger tomorrow. Twelve stone, six pounds, four ounces. What's that? What's that in? Uh, what's that in kilos? Seventy-nine kilos, or something like that. Yeah, it's roughly that. Yeah. It's perfectly on weight. The hard work is now done. And now done. we welcome to the scale the defending world champion. He comes to us from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He is undefeated with 18 wins. All 18 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The reigning and defending WBO, WBC, and IBF unified light heavyweight champion of the world, Arthur. Well, here is Arta Betabiev. Fight 
number 19 as a professional. Was of course introduced with all those belts, WBC, IBF and WBO. He is also the lineal light heavyweight champion. Always in shape. And a very, very scary man. Look, he looks sucked in in the face. You see that? He looks sucked in the face. You can't be telling somebody that they need to get rid of their beard when it's crucial to their to their faith. But it is quite bushy, isn't it? I wouldn't be surprised if, if he has to have a bit of a trim. Do so you think they might make him do it? Yeah, maybe. I'm not absolutely sure. I remember I got it once. I boxed in Scotland as an amateur, yeah? And boys, I don't get a lot of facial hair either, yeah? <laughs> and they made me say they give me a one-blade razor. It was horrible, it was. I think that's a silly rule myself. No, they've, they've relaxed it now. There's a fighter, Kevin Lilly fighter. Oh, in the, in the, the turned over. They've relaxed it. <laughs> Indra Singh Bassi, basically. They, they kind of... They weren't... They did it absolutely the right way, but just made the authorities aware that for religious reasons. Yeah. You, you Remember, John O'Carroll's beard used to be ridiculous. Their beards, it's, it's not really well, acceptable. Let's see, let's see this face off. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this our main event Light. tomorrow night. 12 rounds scheduled for the WBO, WBC, and IBF Unified Light. That beard is bushy. I'm making... It's like, listen, you got to trim a little bit of that. I mean, I get all religious stuff, but you got to kind of trim it. This is, this is a good one. This is up there. Both fighters mean business. I wonder what they're waiting for. You know when you say about the first to look away. The unified world. He looking pale, my man, Bert to BF. Tomorrow night, live on BT I don't know, cuz. Plus in America, a, a magnificent. I don't know. Obviously, smart money is on um, Bert to BF, but I think from a boxing standpoint, you know, Yard has a chance. Now, I'm not stupid. I'm not picking him, you know, but I think he can do it. And remember, I don't gamble. Gambling's for sinners. Look at Gareth Davies. Where, where are the bodies, Ga Gareth? Where are the bodies? Look, he, he's leaving before we start getting hot in there. I'm trying to figure out what Tunde got on his feet. BT Sport, Arta Baturbiev and Anthony Yard. We can't wait for this one. It, what, what did you make of the face-off? It looked quite intense to me. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It looks tense, but it's going to be. It's a big fight. And I mean, yeah, I don't think either will want to lose today, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be some scrap. Oh, yeah, I am, I am. Uh, I wonder if they're going to do any um, post-weigh-in interviews. Here, let's do a jump cut and see. Well, when it's got all Thanks for watching. Uh, drop a like while you're here. Also, we're going to be here during the uh, main event tomorrow, covering that. Yeah, there's, there's just a lot at stake, isn't there? Let's do a jump for, cut. For Baturbi, have this enormous amount at, at stake. All right, here's the uh, the uh, interview he did after the uh, weigh-in. So let's uh, listen to him. But um, the weigh-in is still going on, by the way, over on Queensbury in the top rank page, but he's over here on uh, BT Sport at the uh, other table. Let's listen to what he has to say. Mike here. 24 hours away, or just a little over that. How are you feeling? How did you find uh, the weigh-in? I feel super fasted. Cadillus espionadocious. However you say that, really. That's how I feel. You always seem so calm. You always seem so relaxed. I mean, this is the biggest fight of your life. Yes. How do you keep that cool, calm demeanor? Um, I don't know. It's just inside of me. Yeah. And the feelings right now, you said yesterday you were excited. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting into that serious stage. How, how is I'm everything still feeling? super excited. Because now it's just like, it's real, we've got our tops off, you know what I'm saying? You, you boxed before, you know how it goes. Yeah, we're ready now. It's that time. And the face-off, the final face-off? Same thing. <laughs> same thing. Sense Nothing any different. nerves in his eyes? Nothing. Nothing. I'm sure he can, we're sensing the same thing. We're both just ready to fight. Excellent. And so, in terms of the fight itself? Yeah, I was just going to say, in terms of the fight itself, Anthony, since 2019, you were a totally different fighter in, and yes. an improved fighter yes. and someone who can manage that time and, and pace himself a lot better now do you feel that way 100 percent. i feel like i'm over a better fight all the way around the board um i'm just ready to fight now because this is a fight where i can show what i'm really made of yeah. and tundi you've obviously worked a lot with him day in day out um going into this fight obviously um better be ever better be ever. his strengths what, what do you see his strengths as well i mean at this level when you, you, you don't become 18 and over 18 KOs without doing something right so he's a complete fighter he's an elite fighter and uh, I believe Anthony's 
identical. He's an elite fighter. You cannot prepare for just one game plan. You have to have A, B, C and D. And um, we've fully done that. Excellent. Well, listen, thank both of you for all your time this whole week and in this build-up. Tomorrow night, we wish you the best of luck. <laughs> Good luck, Anthony. Yeah, that's it. Go for it, mate. Go Good for luck. It. Thank you. Good luck, Tundi. Go you, for it. Mate. I was watching you over there. <laughs> Relaxed, calm, as ever, confident. Let's see if they, uh, let's see if they get Bert Tobiev over on here. Let me turn this up for those who didn't see it. And a very, very scary man. I wonder if they'll if they'll have to trim that beard a little bit before tomorrow because in pro boxing and in amateurs now nope. they, they've relaxed the, the the kind of rules on beards because they didn't get Bert to Biev on their broadcast let's see if they finally got him what the hell I'm guessing alright we're gonna do one last jump cut to see if uh, Anthony Yard um, ends up over there at the table so once again thanks for watching please subscribe well no interview from uh, Anthony Yard or uh, Arthur Bertabiev on BT Sport or Top Rank. Uh, guessing they're hungry. But I still feel, I said this about uh, Tank Davis um, uh, during his weigh-in. Like, if you're carrying the event, you know, that's how you become a star. Do your media obligations. You know, um, Floyd Mayweather, for example, when he did his media workouts, they were spectacles, you know, weigh in spectacles, like talk to all the media that you can. I understand you're hungry, irritable, but, you know, at the end of the day, you still have to sell fights. You're not only a fighter, but you are an entertainer, you know, so it is what it is. And then it's like you didn't even do an interview with your own um, like side, like promotional outfit, meaning top rank. Well, Queensberry and top rank. But that's just me. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Please subscribe.